Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Jibber Jab Reviews. In today's show, I'm going to go through a number of ways that you can extend your battery life on the Galaxy Watch Active, because this model in particular, and I mean that more than any of the other smartwatches in the Samsung lineup, could really benefit by extending your battery as much as possible, and of course that's because it does have the smallest size battery. Now I've been testing the watch I guess for about a week now and much to my wife's displeasure I might add because it was actually a birthday gift for her and she hasn't even tried it out yet. Anyways, on typical daily use I get about 1.5 days of life out of it before I need to recharge. Now if you want to truly maximize your battery life then you do have the option of turning on power saving mode plus a watch only mode but I'm really not going to focus on that here because by enabling that function you take the watch down to its bare bones which in the case of the watch only mode yes it does last 33 days but you literally only have the time displayed and this really isn't realistic for the majority of users because after all it is a smart watch and using the watch only mode makes it a dumb watch in my opinion. Now if you're like me then you probably like to have a balance between having functionality while still enjoying a decent battery life and to do this you can turn off things that you don't really need to have running all the time. And one other thing that I wanted to say about these tips, although I am gearing them towards the Galaxy Watch Active users, you can take the same tips and apply them to your S3, your Gear Sport or your Galaxy Watch. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be showing you all the tips on the Active Watch because I know many people have been complaining about the battery life for this smaller device. Okay, so let's start with what eats up your battery power the fastest, and that would be your screen brightness. Now you can adjust this by simply swiping down from the top of your display and then tapping on that sun icon, or you can also go through your settings and then click on the display option. From here, you can adjust your brightness level. And what I suggest is that if you're inside, then anything between a three and a five level is good to have because you're already gonna have light around you. So you don't need to have it super bright. And if you do go outside, the watch is gonna automatically adjust to the optimal lighting level based on how bright it is outside anyways. So again, you really don't need to have your screen on a high setting for most situations. Another easy adjustment is your screen timeout. This feature tells your screen how long to stay on after you finish touching or interacting with it. So basically it's like an inactivity timer and you have a number of intervals to choose from here from as long as five minutes to as short as 10 seconds. So for the most battery saving punch, keep it at 10 seconds. Another area where you can save some power is by disabling the always on display. And I think everyone here is familiar with this as I always show it in my watch face videos, but basically it's the dimmer equivalent of your active display so that when you lift it up, it's always got the time on, which is fine, but I'm not always checking my time out. So if you want to see it, you could just tap the screen or one of the buttons on your watch and it'll come right back up. So if you disable this mode, then you're going to save some more power here too. Okay, the next tip involves closing all your background applications that are running. And to do this, you just need to tap on the home button at the bottom, and that's going to open the menu, which lists all the applications that are loaded on your watch. From here, tap on the recent apps icon at the top, and this is, will show you all the apps that are currently running in the background and that are using up that battery power. Now you can pick and choose which ones you want to close, but if you want to maximize your power, then simply click on the close all option. Okay, another area to consider is to disable your connections. And to get access to those, you just need to go into your settings, which you can find again in the app section, or if you pull down from the top, you can access the icon from there. Scroll down to the connections, and then from here you can scroll down and turn off the Bluetooth option, and that actually means that you're not gonna be paired to your phone anymore, so there's not gonna be any notifications. Those are all gonna be disabled, but assuming that you still have your phone with you anyways, you're still gonna be able to get your notifications from there. Okay, after that one, you can scroll down a little bit more, and you're gonna see Wi-Fi there, so you don't really need that on either, so you can turn that off. Next is you don't need NFC on since you're only going to use that when you use Samsung Pay anyways. So you can go ahead and turn that one off. And then as you scroll down, you're going to see location and that's for your GPS. And this isn't something that I use all the time, especially if I'm inside or at work. 
And this also uses a lot of battery power, so that's another one that you can turn off. Okay, another feature that you can turn off is Bixby. And I don't personally find it very useful to begin with. It always seems very glitchy, and I don't find it overly accurate either. And it's definitely not something that I'm using on a regular basis. So to save some more power, you can disable this. And to do so, you just double tap on the home button there at the bottom, click on the three dots on the right hand side, and then tap on the voice wake up and select off. If you leave it to set on, then it's always active in the background, meaning it's constantly draining power because it's listening for voice instructions from you. So this is an easy one to switch off with a very minimal impact. Okay, another area that you can turn off to save some power is the heart rate monitoring. Now to do this, just open your S Health area, tap on the heart rate app, scroll down and then tap on the gear icon. From here, you can choose between always monitor, frequently monitor, or never monitor, which means that if you want to measure your pulse, then you're going to have to activate that function manually, which again, shouldn't have a big impact on you unless you're going to work out, or maybe you have an underlying health condition where you constantly have to have that data available to you. But for the majority of situations, you can just disable it. Okay, here's one power saving area that gets overlooked, but it's another good one to disable with limited impact to you. And this one relates to the vibration the watch makes, such as when it pushes a notification. Now forcing the watch to vibrate can use up quite a bit of power, depending on how many notifications or calls you receive. And you have three choices here. There's a strong, light, or none option. So to maximize your power, set it to none. And since we're on the topic of notifications, another way to extend your battery power is by removing them. You probably don't need to know every time Facebook or Instagram sends you a notification because you can always read these directly from your phone, which is actually more practical in a way because you'll probably want to reply to a message or to see a full post within the Facebook app. So anyways, if you want to turn off these kind of notifications, you just launch the Galaxy app from your phone. You scroll down to the notification option and from here, you can either select individual apps that you want to restrict notifications from, or you can just turn them all off completely, which of course will provide you with the best power saving option. Okay guys, so those are my top battery saving tips. Again, these are applicable for any of the Samsung smartwatches, but I thought I would gear this towards the active watch users out there just because it has a much smaller battery. And before I turned off all these features, I was getting 1.5 days of use, which has now stretched at least into two days because I disabled many of the functions that I went through above. But let me know if you guys use any of these tips and what kind of impact it had on extending your battery. Thanks again for watching the review and for all your support, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Until then, take care. Thanks again for watching our review, and if you liked it, then show us some love with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends, because with your support, it really helps me keep the channel going, so I can continue to offer you guys discounts, giveaways, and of course, fresh content. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, Take care.